full of reeds. So rolling a 20 means I can do whatever I want. I'm going to see what the prompt was. Mental or physical health rep. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spin this a couple more times, reveal all the prompts, and then pick from those. Because it's number 20, I can do whatever I want. We're going to have some fun. This is not counting. Ooh, okay, that's a Mel recommends. Ooh, okay, that doesn't count. Can you treat yourself. Look at all the small numbers. I'm gonna go again. Let's try and get a bigger number. Nine. Use a color generator. Right, one more, and then I'll pick from those five. Nineteen. Druid. You know what, I just love a good colour generator, so we're gonna go with that. Let's go. Purple. Alright, so this is going to be my book battle. We have one I really want to read and one I'm less wanting to read. To be clear, I want to read both of these really, really badly. But I am hesitant about this. It is a horror manga. I don't know if it's going to be my thing, but I'm definitely willing to give it a go. So that's why it is on the less wanting to read. And then this is Black Butler Volume 3. Oh, I should have said this is Blood on the Tracks. We'll see about that one. And then this is Black Butler Volume 3. So I'm definitely interested in this. Also interested in, in this, but less so. So, got the dice. We will go with Black Butler first. 15. Okay. I don't know if Blood on the Tracks is going to beat that, but we'll go with that. Alright? Blood on the Tracks. 7. Alright. So I'm reading Black Butler Volume 3 by Yana Toboso. Okay, so as I'm editing my Roll of Reads video, I realised I didn't actually show you my journal spread at the beginning so you could see what books I'm reading. Unfortunately, now you're going to go to spoiler because this also has some of the ratings. But, here we go. So, for Dwarf, I wanted to read Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. For a book I'm intimidated by, I want to read The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. For Book Battle, you obviously saw it was Black Butler Volume 3 by Yana Toboso. For Human, I wanted to read Unguarded by Jay Hogan. For Paladin, I wanted to read Sync Volume 1 by John Lees and Alex Cormack and a few others. For Indie, I want to read Claimed by the Orc Prince by Lionel Hart. For A Place I've Never Been. Bin, I picked Black Butler Volume 2 by Yana Toboso. For BIPOC Author, I picked Awakened by Moni Boyce. And for Colour Generator, I picked My Lady's Lover by Nicola Davidson. So, Roll of Reads. Hosted by Mel from a book themed named Mel. Lovely human being. Really cool readathon. I'm excited. In honour of Mel, well not really, but it just so happened that this happened while Roll of Reads is happening. But my mum made me a keychain and I'm obsessed. So I think uh, I think Mel will appreciate too. Focus on Frederica. I have named her Frederica. Look at her. She's a cow. 
my mother's talent is great. She probably wouldn't want me to show you this one. This was her like test of if it worked out and I'm like, no, I love this. I will, I will keep this and treasure it. And Frederica is going to join the family, but my mum is also going to make me like a whole herd of cows. It's gonna be a great time for me. Roll of reads. Things have happened. I have read some things. So I got a place I'd never been and for that I chose Black Butler Volume 2 by Yana Toboso because this is set in England and I have not been to England yet. I'm going to go there. I'm just not sure when. Maybe the end of this year, maybe next year. I haven't been to England yet so I counted this as a place I've never been. Though to be fair I've only ever been to Australia so I could have chosen anything but I wanted to get some Black Butler in here. And Black Butler is about this demon butler named Sebastian and he has formed a contract with a young Earl named CL and the cover that Sebastian needs to take on to live in the human world without rousing too much suspicion is to be CL's butler because this is set in like the 1800s so there are Earls and butlers and all those kind of things. Ooh, it's just, it's such a fun time and I love it and this is beginning the the Red Butler arc. I'm trying to get better at manga terminology. I've always understood arcs in manga, but I've never known when they start and finish or how you're supposed to know. But my friend Max was like, just Google it. So I Googled it and volume two and volume three are a part of the Red Butler arc. I would have called it the Jack the Ripper arc, but apparently it's called the Red Butler arc because we there is a, a Red Butler. So in this, CL is the Queen's guard dog. So he is Jack the Ripper ends up being someone close to CL and that was like heartbreaking. But this person, she, oh, I can't even, okay. Jack the Ripper was Madam Red, okay. I love Madame Red, she is styling. Yes, she's also a serial killer, but you know, we all have our types. Um, I love Madame Red, she was great. I do wish we could have gotten more of her. And then Madame Red had a butler, as so you can see here. So this is Madame Red. This is Madame Red's butler in butler form. This is Grell Sutcliffe. Grell helps Madame Red, with being Jack the Ripper. And we find out that Grell uh, is in a similar way as Sebastian, you know, an otherworldly creature playing a butler. My queen. Ah, look at her. Grell has kind of become my everything. I'm, I'm having the best time with this. But yes, ticked this off. This gets five stars, I'm obsessed. Some place I've never been, done. Next up, I have also completed the Paladin prompt, which I can't actually remember what the prompt is. Is it like an urban setting? So I picked Sync by John Leese, Alex Cormack, Sean Lee, and Colin Bell. This is a comic volume, so this is volume one. Issues one to five are in this and it is about this town called Sink Hill in Glasgow, Scotland And it's where all of the evil people live basically a forgotten East End district of a warped funhouse mirror version of Glasgow, Scotland Sink Hill is a hive of crooks deviants and killers and ordinary folk unfortunate enough to live among them if killer clowns prowl the streets in a blue van, a shovel-wielding vigilante in a fox mask serves brutal justice after dark, and the last bus home is always full of corpses, you must be in Sink Hill. It was so good. Like, off the bat, five stars. This might very well end up being on my favorite of the year list. I'm obsessed. This is so good. Each issue is its own little story within Sink Hill with some kind of continuing storylines. So our first one is about our, we are introduced to Mr. Dig, who is the vigilante in a fox mask. We also get a little glimpse of 
the uh, the bus filled with corpses. I won't go too close to some of these, but we do also get the. Uh, We'll go with this page. The blue van filled with clowns. I won't show you all of these clowns because I think that's disturbing enough. Um, but the clowns turn people into more clowns and uh, it's disturbing but so cool. I, I was very much here for it. Then we have the door at the end which is about this woman who cleans up other people's messes. And by messes we mean other people's murders. She gets rid of the bodies. Ooh, then we have my favourite. A head full of wasps. We have this queen, Florence. So this is Florence. And she's a trans woman. And she was the biggest, baddest boss in Sink Hill a long time ago. And then that was before she transitioned. And then she left and she transitioned. She's living a great life. But... One of her best friends was murdered, so she goes back to Sink Hill now as her true self. She proves she is still the biggest, baddest boss ever. And it was just such a good story because she goes into this bar and like no one knows who she is, but they know, they can tell that she's a trans woman. And so all these people in the bar are just hurling insults and Oh, the worst things that a trans person can hear is what is happening here. And she's like, right, say that to my face. And she just gets in it. She starts fighting everyone. And oh, one of my favorite things that she does is, but after her fight, she's like, you call that a fight? I didn't even take my heels off. And I was like, yes. Oh, she's amazing. I love her so much. She so helped my mood in a particular day. Oof, she was great. I just, I am here for Florence. She's amazing. Then we have Young Team, which these bunch of kids are trying to find their missing friend and they want to kill the clowns that they think have taken their friend. And ooh, children are something else. So the kids uh, get their revenge. Oh, then our last one was White Dog. This was really hard to read, but like it was really good, but it was really hard to read because it's about dog fighting. So dogs are being taken and used in dog fighting rings and it's sad and awful. And you see, you don't see much, but you do see some corpses. So beware of that if you want to go into it. I mean, you get human corpses. There's a difference between human corpses and animal corpses. But then it was really cool how it just, at the end it's going through like, everyone in Sink Hill's a little messed up, but you know, it's our town. And it, it was cute in a really messed up way. I gave this five stars. I'm obsessed. I really, really want to buy it. And I want to buy this volume two as well. Cause I just, I love it. It's amazing and because this is set in Glasgow, it is actually written in a, let's see if I can pronounce this right, a Glaswegian dialect. So that's super cool. Like it took me a second to really get the hang of it. But then once I did, it was like, you can hear the accent as you're reading and it's awesome. And I just, oof. It's like giving me all the feels because my family is from Glasgow. So that was super, super cool to get that little bit of like weird nostalgia, even though I've never been to Glasgow. You know, there's just, ugh, we got our own kilt. I'll show you my kilt. Not my kilt, my tartan. We have our own tartan. I'll show you that. But this is the Murray tartan. I quite like it. It's a good looking tartan. And then there's also a, I'm just gonna show you all my family stuff. This is one of our crests and our saying. You can see it, it's like toot press, which means be ready. And then there is also a um, ancestral castle, which is this one, Blair Athol Castle. And in the castle, there is actually a painting from an ancestor long ago, and it is the Fitting image of my brother and he went there he saw it and he was like wow creepy and then when my parents went there 
my mum took a photo of the painting so that I could see it and I was like oh my god that's my brother in just a dress up. Like it was freaky how similar they looked. Glasgow! <laughs> so Paladin is also complete. Okay so I'm also in the middle of two other prompts. So for my book battle, Black Butler Volume 3 won. So I am almost finished with that. I've just got the last chapter of that to go, which I will finish later today. And then for Colour Generator, I think I got purple. I must have got purple because the book I'm reading for that is My Lady's Lover by Nicola Davidson. I've started this. I'm only part way through the first chapter, I think. Like, only a couple of pages in. I just read it while I was waiting to get my hair done the other day. I mean, I'm a few pages in. I don't really have much to say about it, but I've started it. Am I going to do any others? Sorry, I keep looking down there because that's where my journal spread is. I'll show you my journal spread. It's nothing particularly fancy. I was just doodling this the other night. So, there it is. But yeah, going good on Roll of Reads because it's only the it's only the sixth, and I've already completed two. I'm about to complete a third, and I've started a fourth, and it's the sixth. So you know, I'm not doing too bad. I do really need to read A Crown of Gilded Bones though. I need to get a start on that because I put that in for a book I'm intimidated by. So I need to start reading that so that I can finish it by the end of the month. But I just got a parcel today from Barnes and Nobles. I know what this is and I am so excited. I'm just, oof, I'm, I'm excited. I'm having so many emotions. Okay, okay. Ooh, edges. Absolutely stunning. It's so pretty. Oh, gosh, I love it so much. And then number two. Oh, again, stunning. Oh, love it. Love it so much. If you can't tell, TJ Clune is my favourite author of all time. Time. And yes, I already own these books, but I don't own these editions of these books. The pretty Barnes & Noble's exclusive sprayed edges. Also to my friends that have gotten a arc of In the Lives of Puppets, just know I hate you. I love you dearly, but I also hate you. of a rough time for me right now. Um, don't mind me while I visually stim because whew, life is kind of rough because my darling darling baby, Chopper if you didn't know, my dog, he's a staffy, he is 10 years old and he's been limping for about a week now and like, I thought it was just arthritis and that maybe it would go away, like, you know, maybe it was just cold for him or, you know, it would go away after he, like, moved it a bit, but that didn't happen. And it kept getting worse and worse and, like, it just, it didn't clear up on its own type thing. So I took him to the vet yesterday. They've given him some painkillers and stuff and he's going in for an x-ray tomorrow. They're thinking it's either just arthritis or like the dog equivalent of an ACL. I don't know which one I'm hoping for more, but I just, I just want him to be okay. <laughs> 
because I mean like he's fine he has the same normal temperament he's eating and drinking and going to the bathroom but it just it looks so painful to see him trying to walk around because he's just like he's lifting up his leg and then just like hopping and <sighs> it's not good but he's mostly doing okay we'll see how I'm going tomorrow when he's just having an x-ray anyways it's like halfway through the month actually it is the 15th it is currently 15th so it is halfway through the month and what have i done for all of reads not much cool i've just made a total mess of my room awesome it's exactly what i wanted to do today on top of everything okay so roll of reads okay so yeah, haven't done much. So I did the place I've never been, which was England. So that was Black Butler Volume 2. I did that, five stars. I did Paladin, which was I think like an urban setting. I read Sink, five stars, absolutely love it. And then I did my battle prompt, which I got Black Butler Volume 3 for. So I've done three out of nine. And went halfway through the month. I technically have started My Lady's Lover, but I'm like three pages into it, and I have been for about a week. I just need to get the energy to read it. Even though it's like 60 pages, like it shouldn't take me this long. The main reason for doing this update is because I started reading Unguarded yesterday, and I read half of it yesterday. <laughs> I'm having such a good time with this. So Unguarded is about this guy who just caught his boyfriend cheating on him for the second time and he just straight up and left and he just drove until he had to stop and he ended up in this little small town and he is just really trying to get over that relationship. It's not that he loves his ex-boyfriend, it's that his ex-boyfriend was awful and his ex-boyfriend was like you know you're here to, to to be looked at you know you don't need to work honey like you know just be pretty you don't need to do anything you know you can't do anything just be pretty and you know you can't do anything without me and all this kind of awful manipulative stuff so he's trying to recover from all of that and like work out his self-worth which was really cool and he ends up taking on a position as a like vet assistant slash admin person for the local vet for like a week like that was the original deal so you know I just need someone covering for a week and so this guy comes in does it and it's just it's so cute him like working with the animals for some because he has no experience our other main character is the vet who is a bisexual man who was not out yet and he has limited experience with men so that's a like impacting his confidence a little bit too he's a single dad his wife died a few years ago i think so it's just him and his son and he's running this business and it's kind of in financial crisis because he doesn't like confrontation so he hasn't been like catching up with any of the invoices he's very much attracted to his new assistant and so it's a mutual attraction and they're both very much aware of it and they just have this really cute flirty kind of dynamic and like they're both like really respectful towards each other as well which was really nice it's just it's just like cute and sweet right now like there's no huge dilemma of anything really it's just you know like no big secret that could ruin the relationship it's just this was only meant to be a week type situation like that's the biggest hurdle they have to get through as well as the vet coming out because while our other main character is like he's very out and gay and he's like I couldn't hide this honey I, I make it obvious while he's totally fine with people staying in the closet if they need to like you know you do use his type of like outlook on life I guess he doesn't want to be anyone's hidden secret which is also very very valid and so as much as he likes the vet he's like I don't want to go back in the closet for someone which is so valid and the vet understands that but I'm also really interested to read more of this author's work because I'm loving the vibe like the the writing isn't anything spectacular or complicated or anything, but it's just a fun, easy time. And honestly, that's kind of what I need right now. I can almost guarantee you that I'm not going to read my Intimidated by Prompt, which I was going to read Crown of Gilded Bones. I don't think that's going to happen. And you know what's also annoying about not completing that is that 
Because I was so determined to finally read this book, I put it on my TBR gate and my demon trap for March. So look who's not going to be finishing another TBR. It was an arthritis. He's basically torn the dog equivalent to an ACL, cranial cruciate ligament. That's what he's torn, basically. Yeah, that's a pretty serious injury. <laughs> it's, uh, it's... My brain's not really functioning right now because it's just all my attention is on him. All my focus is on him. Like, all day yesterday when he was at the vet, I, like, I couldn't do anything. I had to cancel on my friends meeting up with him and I... I couldn't read, I couldn't even like listen to an audiobook, I couldn't drive anywhere, just I couldn't do anything. I did end up like um, organising my bookshelf a little bit because like I needed to do something but I couldn't figure out what to do. And then when I got him back last night, oh my dear boy, he was so high. Just driving him home he was like just falling asleep while he was sitting up and I was like oh you poor sweet boy. But I just finished a call with the vet. They do a like follow-up call after your animal has been in to see them. So very, very lovely. And then I also booked him in for his surgery, which is a really, it's a hard thing for me to do because surgery scares the living daylights out of me. I know Chopper's in pain now, but like he's not whimpering about his pain. So to me, it seems like it's more of a mild pain. I don't know. But then if he has surgery, that's an intense amount of pain. Like they're going to, okay, so they're going to do like this. So they're going to like cut in, take out a wedge of bone so that it is better. And then he'll have screws and plates in place. Like, that's a lot of work, and that's scary, and that's so much pain for him to be in. I know that in the long run, the surgery is better for him because that pain is more temporary than the one he's feeling now. If I just left, so in two weeks, he'll be having surgery. It's scary. After the surgery, it's about eight weeks of recovery. And that first week in particular, I have to be like with him kind of constantly. They said it doesn't have to be a 24 hour thing, but hi, I have anxiety and autism. Like I'm not leaving my dog. So again, like there's just lots of things going through my head of how am I going to help my dog? I feel like there's a lot happening, but there's also like not much happening. It's just this one thing that is taking over my entire life yesterday, and it's so cute, my mum tried to make a chopper pin. But like, it's very, very cute. My mum is very talented. We're just trying out a new angle here. We'll see how it goes. Don't mind me just watching the ghoul boys in the background. Things have been happening. So today I was on a book talk with Kate from Library of Kate and it was a really great time. I had a lot of fun. We did a buddy read of The Lila Green Doesn't Care and love this book. Five stars. It was great. Also during the sprints, Sasha got me these. Sasha, I adore you. You're a beautiful human being. I'm so glad you're in my life. You didn't have to do this, but thank you. I've already thanked you like three times already, but you know, one more doesn't hurt. But, oh, I'm so looking forward to reading those. Roll of Reads updates. Books have been read. Books have also not been read. For Dwarf, I was going to read Little Women, but I ended up DNFing that at like chapter two. I just didn't care at all. And the sisters kind of sounded the same. And like, at the end of the day, I just wasn't in the mood for it. So I might try again with reading it one day, but today is not that day. So, so that is a DNF. Then I did finish Unguarded, which was in the place for my human prompt. And I gave Unguarded four stars. It was really cute. I basically loved everything that was happening. There were some really good moments in the endings, like things to do with our main character and like a lot of growth. I don't know, that was just really good. And I'm really excited to keep reading this series. And I will try and read something from this author again. And then... For BIPOC author, I had Awakened, and I have read Awakened. I gave it two stars. 
I'm like so sad because I had been wanting to read this book for years and I finally read it and it like I don't know I think at one one aspect of it that I didn't enjoy I think it might have benefited from being a bit longer and giving us more of an explanation because it's basically like this woman has been having really weird dreams lately she like faints at work and one of her co-workers sees her takes her back to his place that is as creepy as it sounds turns out he is one of her guardians and also turns out that there's like what like six more and they're all people that she knows in her life. They have all been like strategically placed in her life to keep her safe, which is an upsetting concept, but that was enjoyable. I wish that had been developed more. Like she really did brush it off pretty quickly. And I'm like, N if that was me and I found out that people in my life weren't really there because they liked me, they were there because it was a job, I would be upset about that. But she very much just brushed it off and it turns out that all of these guardians are witches and that she is an oracle so descended from oracles her whole family is and this evil vampire is on the hunt for her so that's why she has been protected so it's just her and her guardians like running for a while they go to like the witch's coven to figure out what they're supposed to do the main thing is it's really just a romance between um our main character and the leader of these guardians the relationship was really underdeveloped we just get told that like she's had a bit of a crush on him since they met but he never spoke to her because like that was part of his role in being a guardian it was like no interaction whereas some of the other ones were allowed to interact with her. So she always took his like rebuff as he isn't interested, he doesn't like me, but she was still interested because apparently he's gorgeous. I don't know about you, but it takes more than just being gorgeous for me to have a crush on someone, but whatever. Then like throughout them going on this journey, they kind of get to know each other and like you're meant to, you're meant to think that they're falling in love with each other. I didn't see that. I really didn't see that. They didn't have enough interaction for them to actually develop proper feelings. So that was a missed opportunity. We have this moment where our main character, she gets fatally wounded. Throughout her recovery, the guy never comes to see her because I don't know why. And then after she's like mostly healed, he finally comes in to talk to her. And she's all like, you know, why didn't you come to see me? Blah, blah, blah. And then they have sex like super out of nowhere he's just like I can't resist you any longer and just oh the sex scene was so gross like he kept calling her baby and I was like where did that come from it was just they went from having a conversation to horny so quickly it was like instant it just it happened it was just it was so much and I think it was so much because you're meant to think that they've had this deep and meaningful talk over the time of their journey and gotten to know each other and respect each other and have formed this deep bond and they're in love with each other. I did not get that at all, at all. They seem still like strangers. From the amount of conversations that we saw them having, they're total strangers. They know nothing about each other. And I'm like, I'm fine with people having casual sex, that's fine. But we were made to believe that this was a deep passionate relationship and I was like I don't get that this is some like hookup I don't know it was like just like the way the sex scene was written it there was no build up it was just straight in there weirdly kind of possessive in some bits the guy seemed to have like a totally different personality it was weird and I was just I was really disgusted I didn't like it and I am kind of upset about that because I thought this would be a really great book and I thought it'd be a great start to a new series and while I kind of like the premise I don't like the execution. I think we needed so much more development and just didn't get didn't get enough world building or character building and it was just it was just like throwing all these ideas at a page and hoping they stuck. So technically, if we count my DNF, I only have 3 prompts remaining. So I have intimidated by which is the Crown of Gilded Bones. I'm not getting to that at all. What I say it's the 25th. I haven't started it and I have no plans to start it. I am not in the right place to read that book. I, I know I'll love it because I've loved the two others in the series, but 
because of what's been happening with Chopper, just trying to sort things out in my head. It's just taken so much out of me that I, I haven't been able to read such a large book. And then for Indie, I want to read Claimed by the Orc Prince. I haven't started it yet, but I think I might. Like, I might have time by the end of the month. So if I could read that, like, that would be my main priority, is to read that, because I really want to, and it's queer, and I just, I really want to read it. So hopefully I can do that one. And then the last prompt I have is Colour Generator, and for that, I got purple, so I was reading My Lady's Lover. I am currently... I'm currently 55% of the way through that. I... Could try and finish that tonight, maybe. I was gonna try and finish it uh, yesterday on Mel's sprints. Mel was doing some impromptu roll of read sprints and I was like, cool, I can finish this book. And it was going really well. And then I was playing with my piercing. So I got, not that you'll be able to see, but I got my piercing changed to a ring instead of the, the bar that it was. So I got that changed on Thursday and today is Saturday. So I got that changed and then yesterday during the sprint, I was just playing with it with my teeth like I used to do with my old one. And then the ball just went boom and it just flew off. It was bouncing all over the table and I'm like, <laughs> I managed to catch it, but I was like, what the hell? It, it just flew off so easily. And like, I was kind of annoyed because I was like, this just got put in. So I tried to put it in myself couldn't do it. I asked my mum if she could try. She also couldn't do it. So I went down to a local piercer and I was like, can you please put this in? They got it in. Thank gods. That just took like a lot out of my day during those sprints. So I didn't get to finish that, unfortunately. And yeah, I haven't done any reading today because I've just been like filming today and I did the book talk, which was awesome. I have also, I have scheduled my first sprints. It's like sprints on my channel. And this is kind of scary because I just have this terrible, terrible fear that no one's going to rock up. And like, I know people are because I was saying this to Kate on the live stream and because like a bunch of our friends were there, all of my friends were like, you know, yes, I'll be there. Like, I'll be there for a little bit at least because I'm doing it early in the morning. Like, it was just, it was lovely that people were like, no, I'm gonna be there. I really love the book community. I'm so glad to be a part of it. Okay, so I just finished My Lady's Lover by Nicola Davidson. I had that in for my color generator prompt and I'm giving it three stars, more like a 3.5 star. It was really good. It's a historical sapphic novella and this woman is stuck in a really really awful marriage like wow and her lady's maid gives her a massage one day and uh they have a week of intense passion and it turns into love and all that kind of good stuff it was really good i did enjoy it I really want to read the rest of the series as well. I'm pretty exhausted. I did not sleep at all really last night because I think it was just the anxiety of Chopper going into surgery because he is going to be in pain pretty soon. But yeah, I think this is where I'm going to leave this vlog because I'm not going to get anything read before I post this, which I'll post this tomorrow, so nothing else is going to get read. And like I said, all I have left is A Crown of Gilded Bones, which isn't getting read this month, and Claimed by the Orc Prince. I might try and get Claimed by the Orc Prince done, but we shall see. This concludes my Roll of Reads vlog. It was a really fun time. If you participated, let me know. And if you're not already subscribed to Mel, which you should be, go and subscribe to her. I will leave her in the description box. I'm hoping this won't be the last video you see of me for a while, but we will see how I deal with Chopper's recovery and how he deals with it. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one, whenever that'll be. Bye.